Hey guys, today we're going to go over a quick and simple Clip Studio paint sort of tutorial demo just going over my process and some of the brushes I use and how I approach digital painting in general. Um, so first off, obviously, it's starting with a sketch. I really enjoy using the design pencil in this program. It has a nice opacity and texture to it that mimics traditional pencil, which is usually what I look for in sketching brushes. So when your sketch is finished, my approach to color is usually to have an idea of an overall theme. For this, it's fall and forest, so a lot of warm colors and some green and probably some blue to offset all the warm. Um, it is okay if you need inspiration for color palettes, just to go ahead and go to Google and try to Google like photographs and stuff. Um, for this, I looked up just a lot of fall forests and it's kind of fun. For brushes, I definitely recommend getting into Clip Studio's watercolor brushes. Um, I played around with a lot of different ones and even some of their pattern brushes for leaves and stuff which you'll see on the left there there's actually a lot of different patterns and stuff and clip you can use which i would say is one of the program's strong suits and kind of interesting kind of fun um it's definitely i think made more for comics and to kind of do a lot of things quickly but you can definitely find a way to utilize them in digital painting too. Though, if you do, I would recommend sort of painting over them to meld them into the picture so it doesn't look like you've just stamped everywhere. Um, so what I'm doing here, after I have a good vibe of the background colors and where I want to go, I actually flatten the entire piece. Um, I set the sketch line art to multiply and merge it down onto the color, and then start to just paint. Um, I actually have a brush pack from Jing Sketch. He has a lot of brushes for Procreate, Clip, Photoshop, like all kinds of stuff. Um, I like some of his rendering brushes. So this is me discovering the wonderful world of frill brushes, which I didn't realize were a thing. <laughs> They definitely need to be painted in to make them not so obvious, but I think it's kind of a fun thing. Um, I, I was enjoying messing around with it. At this point, it's just really trying to get the ambiance and that volume in the picture out. Um, on top of painting and details, I will also go in with an airbrush on a separate layer and lower opacity and kind of like you can see around the fox and around her skin and hair and stuff. Um, there's that airbrushed glow and it's a really cool way to soften pieces, especially digital pieces, um, to kind of blend colors together and mimic that like ambient lighting haze. Here I'm going in with some more watercolor brushes and just kind of poking in some blue, messing in with more light. And my favorite is the add light, the add layer to get some really bright light in there. Uh, color dodge is also a layer that works. Um, I believe this is all just mainly the add layer. It's a very saturated, bright glow. And I just color pick from the background and then use that on another layer. When you're doing backlighting, it's important to make sure you remember to sort of shade the character up front. Um, notice I made her darker and the fox darker and then really lit up behind her. And it adds, I think, a really nice, cool focal point. So 
Here, I ultimately decided that the picture wasn't detailed enough with just sort of the fuzzy colors and painting the detail in wasn't really working, so I actually ended up adding a layer and going in with a marker tool and drawing line art. And Clip Studio's uh, marker tool is actually really nice for this. Um, I tend to prefer line arting with markers as opposed to ink pens um, because I like the opacity and how the colors below can sort of bleed through that. So a lot of details put into the hair and sort of pulling out wrinkles in the dress and detailing around the fox and the trees and sometimes it's easier to paint on top of a little more solid line art even though I don't always have the patience for it. So at this point we've got our line art in and I'm starting to go in and paint out even more detail. This is really the the final rendering stage. I've got the mood, I've got the colors down, I've got my line art, now it's time to go in and do any final color tweaks and really start painting out like finishing hands and hair and leaves and just kind of the mindless render portion of drawing which I find quite enjoyable. You can see I have a lot of layers on the side. Um, most of those layers are just, I kind of impulsively make layers while I draw in case I want to turn something off. I really just kind of use layers more as experiments, like they're there if I need to turn something off or on, but once I'm sure I want it, I merge it back down into the big flat image. Um, a lot of blending brushes and some of the watercolor brushes and stuff like that will only work if all the colors are on the same layer. So definitely keep that in mind if you are going for more of a painterly approach to your art. So I'm darkening up the foreground to increase the contrast around her. Um, anytime you're working on a picture, um, however it is, you want the place with the most color and contrast, that will be your focal point. So trying to sort of frame her with a vignette of trees and make sure she stands out. I'm bringing um, some of the light color behind her, that bright sunshine into the little leaf flecks around her. Taking the orange in her hair and putting it in the trees, I wanted the forest to kind of look like it was coming out of her dress, like she is part of the forest. So I ended up painting a lot of the trees down into the dress and scattering leaves around. Another big thing when for cohesive painting and color is you want to try to make sure you're bouncing color around the piece. Like if you use one color one place, you want to make sure you're carrying it around and using it around the entire piece. You don't try not to isolate colors. So like the green in the back, I've also scattered some down at the bottom um, right there. You can see like grass, orange in her hair, orange around. I mean, this one's pretty straightforward because it's mostly all fall colors, but even in really colorful pieces, a Balancing colors is just as important as balancing like your line art and the complexity of the piece in general. My biggest advice for anybody like getting into a new program or trying stuff out is to do just that. Just try stuff out, especially with more painterly painting, there's no right or wrong way to experiment. You can always make new layers, um, like treat it like traditional painting, like you can always make another layer and paint more on top of it and just kind of go ham. But yeah, this is the little Fall Witch Elena returning as I desperately crave fall and 
cooler weather. But yeah, you guys have a fantastic week and happy arting!